Yo, what is up you guys? My name is Benji and welcome back to another video. Yo, real quick before we get started with today's awesome video, you guys, I did want to let you guys know that I do now live stream daily on a different YouTube channel called Day Trade with Benji. The link is down below in the description if you guys want to subscribe to it and literally catch me live streaming every single day during market trading hours. We pretty much hang out. I show you guys all the trades I make on my other portfolios because I have day trading portfolios. I have like all kinds of portfolios, honestly, that I don't show on this channel necessarily. So stop by day trade with Benji and definitely subscribe. And hopefully we'll see all of you guys tomorrow at market open. So today we did seem to be having a quite green day in the market, but later on, pretty much when the sentence started speaking, the market sold off and we actually ended up pretty right across the board. The VIX actually closed pretty high today, 7.1% in the green. Dow Jones closed 0.22 in the red, S&P 0.22 in the red, NASDAQ 0.38 in the red. And as far as the big news on the day, McConnell blocked Schumer's bid to unanimously pass $2,000 stimulus checks. So although this still could go through, it doesn't look like it is going to go through after all. I was listening to the Senate meeting live. The Republicans didn't seem too eager to make this go through, honestly. So that, of course, did play a part in the sell-off today, as well as just the end-of-the-year profit-taking. I did read somewhere that today is the last day to sell stocks in order to be able to write off the capital loss or whatever it is. Um, so there was, of course, also probably some sell selling with that in mind. And other than that, some other news, Intel shares rise after third point urges shipmaker to explore strategic alternatives as market share deteriorates. So as a lot of the semiconductors are finding themselves in some sort of a pickle here because a lot of the companies are building their own chips like Microsoft and Apple announced this year. Um, Intel, of course, has been beat up pretty bad throughout this because Apple is no longer using their chips. So when this news came out, it shot uh, Intel shares up around like five or six percent. So we'll have to see what happens. But moving forward, we will have to see some of the chip makers either pivot a little bit because, of course, um, as a bunch of these big companies are making their own chips, it's going to change the market space itself. So we'll have to see what happens. Some other interesting news, the Boeing 737 MAX passenger resumes flight in the U.S. after nearly two years of a ban. And I'm really curious on what you guys would do. Just being completely honest, you guys, now that the Boeing 737 is back in the air, would you guys ride in the Boeing to, let's say, even if it was at a discount? I want you guys to be honest. If you guys were offered maybe a L.A. to New York trip, you know, maybe for a few hundred dollars less, but it was on the Boeing 737, would you guys take the flights? If you guys want my opinion on it, I honestly probably would not. Um, although I still know that statistically speaking, it's really, really safe to be flying compared to even like driving and other things. I still probably wouldn't feel comfortable riding on this Boeing 737 just after the track record it has. Uh, but I'm curious on your guys' take. Would you guys ride in it, um, especially if it was a little bit of a discount or something? But for the big portfolio today, we are in the red. We're down 0.25% on the day, 396,519 as of this moment. You guys want to see something crazy though? Earlier this morning, pre-market, look at what I saw. I saw 400K pre-market. We were up 2,500 and some change. I was like, man, today is the day. We finally did it, you guys. We hit 400K. But as the market opened that fast, it sold off just as it normally does. The pre-market is always a tease. So... Over the last week, though, we are up still 1,900 in the green, 0.49%. Last month, up 1.74%, uh, 6,700 in the green. Last three months, 26.3K, 7.11%. And then last year, 7.34%, 27.1%, and 27.6%, 7.5% as of all time. Now, as far as trades today, new purchases, pretty much nothing. We did make a few though. We bought to close a stag call that is expiring pretty soon here. This one was at like a 70% profit range. So we bought to close it early for 20 bucks and we went ahead and sold a further out one for 55 bucks. So all in all, I made a little bit of a profit there off that one. Just while we hold on to stag, a company that I like actually a lot. And then other than that, we bought one share of Lockheed LMT at 353.70. So not really all that much to buy. We also don't have that much cash balance. I also want to sort of save up some of my cash balance because we will be looking to buy to close our Apple uh, calls pretty soon here because Apple as of this moment is running up a lot and we need to figure out something with our Apple play because we are selling nine contracts calls Apple currently so we're gonna have to figure something out with that other than that though everything is in the green besides this right here on the screen which I'm not really too eager to buy anything else and these all that much right now but moving forward we'll have to wait and see next you guys let's take a look at the brand new long-term portfolio here on TD Ameritrade it's currently up as of this moment around $70 in the green although we did have a really mixed red day um, as well as a green day today in this long-term portfolio. We did add some more shares today, which we'll go over here in a second. So the portfolio is coming together pretty nicely here. But as you guys see here, we are starting to build up a good amount of shares within a few different holdings. 
Amazon for one was up a lot today. We we're up $147 on the um, Amazon share that we have. So that's pretty good. That's holding the portfolio up pretty much um, all on its own. And then other than that, the only purchase we made today, we bought uh, two more shares of Square at 220.83. We bought three more shares of ArcG at 94.12. We grabbed one more share of RK at 125.74. One more Square at 216.20. One more ArcG at 92. And we grabbed two more shares of Square, one share at 212 and one share at 210. So pretty much dollar cost averaging, which is pretty fun actually, because um, this is a brand new portfolio, but we're already getting some action. We're already been able to get some uh, shares from pretty cheap actually. I mean, Square is down like almost $40 from the recent high. So I'm pretty happy I'm able to get this dip hopefully. I mean, hopefully it's a dip. The worst thing that can happen of course is when you start buying into a dip and it just keeps dipping, but um, I'm pretty bullish on Square long-term. I'm happy about it. Um, being down because hopefully this is a better entry point than I might have been able to get previously. But pretty excited overall. This is where the portfolio is in as of this moment. I want you guys to comment down below anything you guys think I should add more of, less of, etc. Because moving forward, this is of course going to be the more aggressively changing, fast-paced, uh, long-term portfolio that we'll be working on. Next, guys, let's take a quick look at the M1 Finance portfolio, which we did get another cash balance deposit today, which we did end up buying some more stuff on, which is awesome. It's currently sitting at 48.11 and we're still up 76%, which is awesome. Also, we grabbed two more stocks today. We grabbed $125 worth of Tesla today, and we also grabbed $125 worth of BABA today. So BABA's down around 6% right now. Um, it has been coming up a little bit throughout the day. So unfortunately with um, M1 Finance, you have to wait until the next morning to buy it, which kind of stings, but whatever. But other than that, I want to grab more Tesla consistently just because no matter what the price is at, I want to just over time have a bunch of Tesla in the portfolio. I think it's going to do us well long term. We're already up 173% anyway, so it's not going to hurt to add a little bit more on top of what we already have. But overall, this is where the portfolio is at. I'm excited to grab some more BABA though. Again, BABA's really at a dip right now. It's only like 30% from the recent highs, so hopefully that's a good buy. And other than that, everything is looking pretty good in the portfolio overall. But now before I go, you guys, let's go over some viewer questions and comments. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. They could be about investing, business, real estate, or anything at all. I just leave something down below. The first one is from Luke. What is the best way to get my portfolio to a monthly dividend payout of $100 for long term? So Luke, if you want to get your portfolio to $100 payout per month um, for your long term portfolio, that's an awesome goal to have, of course. That was my goal, of course, at one point. And then we next goal was 1000 etc. Um, but the easiest way to do this is, of course, just to reverse engineer. So you're going to need to have a certain amount of shares that pay out a certain amount per month or per quarter, etc., to get to that level. So the main thing to think about with this is don't get caught in something that I got caught in and a lot of others did when they first started investing into dividend stocks. Don't get caught in a space where you're just chasing yield and you're just chasing an amount paid out per month. There are a lot of very, very high paying dividend stocks, but they also have their own risks involved, such as the stock price really deteriorating over time or maybe them even cutting the dividend or suspending the dividend completely. So really my best advice to you, Luke, is to really invest in high quality stocks that also do pay a dividend rather than investing into low quality stocks that pay a very high dividend, if that makes sense. So if I could go back in time and tell myself one thing and really drill it into my head, it would be that um, exactly because I really made some mistakes really chasing high yield only and not really caring too much about the underlying company or where it's going to go in the future. And it's definitely gotten me into some trouble in the past. So best advice is to invest into high quality companies that also pay dividends until you do get to that $100 per month um, part, which I'm sure you will. And it's definitely, definitely possible. But you guys, that is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much as always for stopping by. Please, please drop some likes on this video, some comments, please. And also be sure to subscribe and never miss a thing. I post videos every single day going over all of my trades, all the stocks I'm buying and selling throughout my multiple portfolios. So it really means a lot to me if you subscribed and followed along. And lastly, you guys, we do have a Discord server that's dedicated to investors like you. It's full of dividend investors, option traders, day traders, and much, much more. So join the Discord. The link is down below in the description. It's absolutely free to join. And I hope we see all of you guys in there. Again, thanks for stopping by, you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.